Halloween. The time for frights, for scares, for putting little razor blades in candy is a fun little gag. The fear on Halloween is felt throughout everyone, and I thought I should put my metaphorical hand into the metaphorical candy bowl and set that says take one, and yet I'm planning on just taking the bowl and throwing it at the nearest child I see wearing a Five Nights at Freddy's costume because I am deathly scared of the Fredbear. So today I'm going to take you on a journey across the scariest thing to come to modern gaming. Zombies. More importantly, Call of Duty. Spooky, scary, racist kids. I've been wanting an excuse to talk about this whole entire topic for a fat minute now because this game and the community surrounding it literally raised me and is such a big part of who I am to this day in the games I play. And what's a better time to talk about my favorite game franchises that's not technically a game franchise but in fact a subsection of a very specific set of games that honestly wasn't even supposed to be full game mode and, 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 and there's a little easter egg but then it exploded beyond belief to the point where it's just a huge community of people that still play all these games to this day even though the multiplayer side of the most of these games are just as dead as the zombies we're going to be killing, then Halloween. So without further ado, I give you Call of Duty Zombies. Call of Duty Zombies is a mode where the end goal is non-existent. From the moment you first boot up into any map, you have a pistol and a room of zombies, and you can then kill said zombies to earn points, which unlocks guns, doors, perks, upgrades, and traps. And it's up to you to try to survive in this horde as long as you possibly can, as it gets harder and harder after every subsequent round. And that's honestly all you need to know about zombies off the bat. It's just a piece of side content for you to challenge not only your friends, but yourself, to see who could get the highest round and who could complete a certain player made challenge like only using the starting pistol or never leaving the first room which also made the most violent cold brutal war in all of zombies when the olympia gang met the m14 gang these gangs waged war on each other for years and are still battling to this day and this war is pointless and i don't know why i'm talking about it but m14 game for life you know the core structure of zombies is very simplistic and rudimentary, but the fun was player made and that kept people coming back game after game, trying to beat their high score so they could brag to their friends about how they got to round 18 and are like totally the coolest kid in school and everyone likes them and no one could even ever beat that score and that kid was me. It was a really cool game and I was proud of that shit for years. Within each map there are these things called perks, which change how you play in lots of different ways. There's quick revive which either lets you self revive if you go down in solo or revive your teammates faster in co-op. There's double tap which in most games doubles your bullet damage by shooting two bullets at once and throughout all the others stands one god among men, Juggernog, the most iconic useful perk in this game which takes your base health and more than doubles it so now you can get spanked on the ass five whole time by the Zom daddies. I'm so sorry that I just said that. To really understand the very long and stupid journey I'm about to take you on we must first look at the most important aspect of this game, the maps themselves. The game, which once again isn't even full game, starts off right after the main story of Call of the Duty. Man, Call of the War. Duty! <laughs> World at War. And you slowly wake up after a plane crash and see multiple human-like figures in the distance. And soon, one of those little guys runs at you revealing it's a zombie. Right as the title plays. Call of Duty Zombies, that's the name of the game we're talking about. You get it? I'm proud of you. And then after that really scary cutscene, you're sent into the scary little map. And by whittle, I mean really, really whittle. And yet, the zombies still, even in the newer remaster of this game, yeah, you heard me right, this random ass game mode in Call of Duty that never even got its own game has fucking remasters. But even in the remaster, the zombies take so fucking long to get into the building that you're basically a zombie yourself. And after you take down the first wave, you gotta do it again and wait another millennia until they finally crawl on the windows like they're your high school boyfriend that wants to do math in your bedroom at 11 p.m. and it just so happens to be that your name is Janica Math. Math is your middle name. He's here to do you. The first map is Nocturne Toten, which is code name for Night of the Undead. And this map starts off as just a tiny little room with guns and zombies, which is nothing exceptional, but there is a box. And if you know anything about me, you know that I love box, especially this one because it sang my song in my childhood. And that song went, okay, do three spins, shoot each of the latch on the box, three spins in the other direction, lay down, get up, lay down, spin around, shoot the back of the box, knife it, lay down again, goddammit, now get up, turn around, and okay, 
You're free to openly roam around the cabin and press square to receive your first ray gun and- Ah! What the frickin' frickin' Fuck! You must have done it wrong. This kid never tells lies. This is a glitch to always get the ray gun and key holds your time. First, take out your pistol. Make sure it's full ammo. Make sure it's pistol. Go pro mode. And you should get a ray gun. Yep, there's a ray gun. Thank you for watching and remember to subscribe. The mystery box is a tale as old as time and time only started when World at War, W-A-W for layman, which also seemingly stands for WOW, a witch. Yeah, that's right, this game's got fucking witches now too, you impressed yet? Well fuck you, you fell for the oldest ruse in the book. The witches don't even show up two games from now and hit claim that bitch. W.A.W. dropped on a nice winter's night of November 11th, never forget. And this thing had everything you'd want. It had guns, it had monkeys, it had a flamethrower, it had more guns. It had the best thing to ever grace this god green earth that we call the planet, the ray gun. It had even more guns. This thing was filled with nothing but guns and broken dreams. You might as well call my sixth grade closet after I lost my fourth consecutive paintball tournament. And this is what stood it apart from the normal Call of Duty gameplay. The gun, the zombies. So after this mode got way more traction than it ever should have gotten because it was just a side little project, they decided to milk this cash cow for all it was worth and release three other maps in the DLC. And those maps were Verrucked, or as the English like to say, Crazy, which is such an original title you'll never guess where this map took place. In a spooky little crazy mental institute, so crazy and wacky and there's a scary dentist that lives here and a fountain of blood. Then there was Shinonuma, or as once again the English like to say, no not the bad English, the other bad English. The Swamp of Death, and boy were they correct, this place is filled with death and floggers and you can also get to around 3 million, even if you're the shittiest shitter to ever go to prom cause they never expected anyone to get past like round 15, so they just did a thing called not spawn in more fucking zombies. And then finally they released Darice, and holy shit this map goes hard. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what the translation for this map is, we'll come back to that later. So for now, it's going to be a little nice little present underneath the Christmas tree that you're not allowed to look at until after this. Doris was that needle in the haystack of decent but not very impactful maps and did you google it? Did you google what it stood for? I told you not to, to open your present God damn it! you ruined this whole thing for everyone, the video is basically over at this point. Yes I'm talking to you, you specifically ruined this video for the whole class. The other people watching this video didn't look it up, now did they? It's just you, and now you have to live with that. Alright fine, you get another chance, but I'm I'm moving your name to the color chart to red. The Reese is where we fully got to experience a lot of what zombies had to offer with the introduction of this little thing called Pack-a-Punch, which turned your boring piss-stained gun, ah, pew, <laughs> I spit on it, into this crazy wacky waving laser gun that went and destroyed everything in its path, allowing you to go past what was thought possible by any mortal and get more bang for your metaphorical buck, and that, and that buck was $5,000. But this little machine, alongside the mystery box, alongside the perk machines that were introduced in the other maps, will be prevalent in every other zombies game after this. All the good ones, that is. But little did tiny dumbass me know that this game was gonna take over my gamer brain, because I had never touched World at War until I was much older and discovered modded maps, but what I did play, was a map that would send the zombies mode from tiny little pisser itty bitty mode <laughs> to one of the most iconic, recognizable parts of the Black Ops franchise. The best zombies map of all time. Kino Durto and Black one Ops 1. There is no fucking way! There is no fucking way! Kino de Toten roughly translates to Theater of the Dead, and this theater is for sure hosting a couple dad guys. That's for sure. Kino was the first map released on the video game I like to call Black Ops 1. And I like to call it that because it's neither Black Ops 2 or Black Ops 3 or even Black Ops 4 or Cold War. I guess I'm just kind of quirky like that, I don't know. This map is truly where shit started to hit the fan. If you know anything about shit fans, I don't want you watching this video anymore. Why, are, why do you know anything about shit fans? What? 
Why do you know about shit fans? You want to know what I know about shit fans? Like, I I know the average amount of what, what that is. Like, I know the Wikipedia page. Kino was the introduction of, to a lot of players in the Zombies franchise because, of course, many people played World at War. But it wasn't too mainstream yet until Black Ops 1 came out and everyone was like, So you're telling me there's zombies in this game? I've never heard of that before, it's 2010, let me have a go. And have the go they did. This map blew up the goddamn world, unlike a map coming up later that actually does blow up the world. And everyone and their mom tried Kino, which made everyone's mom turn into Chaos X Silencer and start crawling this map the, the greatest map, map of all, of all time. time. And while yes, I think a majority of people who say that are blinded by nostalgia, I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't love this map just as much as Average Joe over there. And I will fully admit, that it's not nostalgia, you bitch. You thought I was gonna come all over this map because it's my childhood? No, no! I still will choose this map over 90% of the other maps every time I boot up these games. This map is fucking amazing, and I'll tell you why. Sometimes I don't want to boot up zombies and have six tabs open all of Mr. Rafflewaffles talking over each other. Hi guys, Hi guys Mr. Mr. Rafflewaffles. Like it's some sort of British zombies convention. Sometimes I just want a nice relaxing game to kill zombies and listen to music to, and this map is the best for that. The setup is very easy, you go up the stairs, and if you go left and downstairs, you're a menace to society and I hope you get stuck in those chain link fences out there, you deserve no love. Sorry, but this is serious. Once you go the correct way, you just gotta turn on power, link the teleporters, get your guns, and now you got a perfect little setup and it's perfect for co-op too, because there's so many viable strategies like camping in the alley, training on the stage, sword in the lobby, which side note, for those of you that didn't go to zombie school, otherwise known as brain class to not to be mistaken with dome class because these guys are freaks. Training or zoomy zoomy horde mode is the primary form of corralling all these zombies into a nice little killing group and you do this by running in a circle narrowly avoiding each zombie like you're Michael Clayton and eventually you get yourself a nice little line of the undead. Now while you're running this train you can decide to do two things hit a trap or gangbang and if you're not getting gangbang then what's the point? God I just need to Kick flip off the Empire State Building, that is awful. Using such items as the Thunder Gun, the Wonder Waffle, that one really shitty Walmart brand vacuum that they got on transit which you acquire by taking roughly 16 bus trips around the goddamn map. And each of those items are what's classified as the Wonder Weapon. Usually on any given Zombies map, there is one to two Wonder Weapons, which do insane amounts of damage with the ability to kill big hordes with one or two shots. Usually this weapon is difficult to obtain and requires a lot of timing and precision to build or find, but in Kino it's just in the fucking box I was telling you about. You roll that bitch, you might I just get it first try, baby. Go pro mode. But also on Kino, they bring back the other wonder weapon with the ray gun. And like I lied earlier, it's not the best thing to grace this earth. It's kind of doo doo water a lot of the time. It's good, yes, but it has splash damage, which means you take damage as well a lot of the time. So if you get trapped, you might as well just turn that ray gun around and blast your teeth into your brain. Because you're not getting out of that thing alive. But on the bright side, when that happens, you are legally obligated to be the most annoying motherfucker in the lobby screaming they need to come revive you because you are in fact the second coming of Christ and you have the Reagan. And I know you're watching this video right now probably thinking, yeah, it's a it's an alright map, but it's is it better than X, Y, and Z maps? And jokes on you, dumbass. X, Y, and Z aren't even real maps. Next question. Five, the fifth zombies map. Wait. Yeah, the fifth Zombies map. This map is the second map that's launched on the disc with Black Ops 1, and in my opinion was the less good of the two, and I know I'm going to be hunted down for having that opinion, but honestly that's basically what happens if you ever have an opinion in the Zombies community. Absolutely no one can agree on anything here. It's a very cool idea having JFK pre-Texas and Fidel Castro teaming up to fight zombies in the Pentagon, and it's an insanely cool concept and very well done. It was just too enclosed for me to really get into it, probably because I was 9 when I played it for the first time so going back now I'd most likely enjoyed a lot because I did enjoy playing through the remake of Classified. Yeah not only are there remasters but remakes. This mode is a fucking full on game with lore bigger than your mom's ass. It is fucking insane. I've played this game for at least 13 years now and I still know very little about the surrounding story and lore about this game because it's so complicated and all over the place so if you want to learn about that there's from a few really good videos I'll be linking in the description but back to Zambies. This game much like World at War had multiple DLC packs introducing new maps with each, and those maps were Ascension, Shangri-La, Call of the Dead, and Moon. And we're going to start with a big red rocket itself, Ascension. Ascension is the start of the ever-looming story surrounding the zombie storyline, 
Which makes sense, because this was the home of Group 935, which is like the whole start of zombies and something about Elder Gods and blood and shit. I don't even know. Go watch those videos, and I'm not going to try to explain the incorrect knowledge I already have. Ascension is a very fun map. It's also a very easy map, because of the huge open flat area they have of one of the landing pads, which allows it to be the perfect beginner's map. But it also isn't perfect, because yes, I love when the developers innovate and improvise on things in the map, but these fucking monkeys are assholes. Just let me Keep my goddamn perks. Go fuck yourself, Curious George. This map isn't too different from Kino. In fact, the, the wonder weapons are the exact same, and it's a very survival-based medium-sized map with many open areas for training and a very interesting atmosphere, with this map being the only map to my knowledge that starts without color and will remain black and white until you turn on the power, in which case it goes from black and white to a kind of grayish color. But the main source of this map's popularity is the introduction of the very first Easter egg. The Easter eggs in Call of Duty are basically the main story missions. They're called Easter eggs because they give you basically no information on how to complete them. They kind of just let you figure it out. And if zombie YouTubers like Mr. Raffle Waffles didn't exist, I don't think 99% of the people that play this game would ever know about any of these. Because you know that joke I made about getting a free ray gun earlier? Yeah, that's basically just the Easter eggs at this point. They're a full on egg scavenger hunt you'd have on Easter, but if your mom hated you. The amount of insanely specific things you have to do in each of the Easter eggs, which get more and more specific as the games go on, because just look at the types of things you have to do in this. You'll need the retriever because it will give you a spoon, and that's get around 17, go to the three dials at the bottom of the citadel, and enter the numbers 666, and you're gonna need to listen in all the areas of the map for a bird squawking. It sounds like a seagull. Like, I'm gonna have a list on the screen right now of some of the possible spawn locations, but after you've done three spirit on three different birds on three different rounds, you're then going to need to do a similar thing, a fourth time. You need to enter the numbers 872. Those numbers need to be entered into the electrical dials that we just used in the Citadel. One light, you repeat the one light. Then you get a new two lights and you do the new two light. And then you enter three, then it'll show four, you enter four, it'll show four. You'll then see a ghosty boy spawning in holding a banjo. And you're going to want to hold square on the banjo to take it from him after he's played a little jingle. So that you need to give the ghost his banjo back, he'll play another jingle, and, then, and you need to use trial and error to find a Morse code combination which is going to spawn a boat. Now. And with all those insanely batshit steps, people still love finding these easter eggs, and some people play these maps just for the easter eggs, and I'm like that for one map, but we'll get to that later. Ascension, being the first easter egg, had to go all out and give you, uh, like a, you send a little ball to space, and you get a death machine. Fancy. But Ascension isn't just love for the easter egg, the map itself is very fun, and I think it utilizes movement very well with the monkeys, because even though they only last for one round, they make it so you can't just sit in one spot the whole game or else you get punished by monkeys. That sounds like the worst porno imagine- or the best porno imagine. But what do I know? I'm just a guy who likes two things, zombies and getting punished by monkeys. Call of the Dead. That was a moment of silence for this incredibly underrated map, which not only has the big bad of the map being roided up, perked out George Romero, but it also was the first ever Zombies map I ever played, when I snuck into my brother's room to use his Xbox while he was gone. And this map freaked me the fuck out in the best possible way. It's the first Zombies map that has an imposing presence like George, and it's done beautifully with this huge hulking man slowly walking toward you at all times, making you feel like the last girl in a Halloween movie. Get it? Cause you get it. You're doing so good. This map was the first of the Of the Dead series you'll see in every game preceding this, where it's a story within the greater Zombies timeline, but it's with a celebrity cast in a complete new area for a little breather from the rest of the insanity going on. And in this game you get to play as Danny Trejo, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Robert Englund, and Michael Rooker. Well, all of them are on set filming a new Zombies movie, but this actor got a little bit too method and bit George Romero's face hole, which sends the character into a frenzy where they gotta fight their way off this frozen island and Danny Trejo's a triple barrel shotgun. The Of The Dead series are maps usually regarded as some of the best maps in each game, with Call of the Dead, Mob of the Dead, Shadows, Of The Dead. No, no, no. No, not, not, not you, Seamus. Ah, poo. And Blood of the Dead is the exception, but all of Black Ops 4 is the exception, really. Shangri-La is one of my more disliked maps because it's, it's not because I'm, it's not because it's hard and I'm not good, it's, it's those damn monkeys again. Shangri-La has a very pretty map with a cool atmosphere and the Wonder Weapon lets you do every man's dream and huck a two-year-old across the football field like a goddamn pinskin. I don't have much to say on this map. It's good, I just don't like how enclosed it is. I like the ability to not be stressed out about being cornered in every area I go to, but that's just because I'm bad at zombies, I admit it. The final map, or at least on Black Ops 1 Zombies, the game that I'm talking about currently, is Moon. 
And if you haven't heard of the moon, fuck you. In this map, nothing really too crazy happens. You go to the fucking moon, and there's this astronaut there, Bill Clinton, the first astronaut. Some excavators, a little girl trapped in a pyramid, you blow up the earth. Pretty decent map. On to Black Ops 2. Black Ops 2 starts out with arguably the worst zombies map in history, and everyone fucking loved it and by everyone i mean me and my 12 year old friends but mainly just town because what the fuck is transit Treyarch decided they needed to somehow top themselves after blowing up the earth so now instead of the main cast of characters everyone's grown to love they changed it to all these weird little dudes and girl with boobs and 12 year old me loved that choice and he put us back on earth the other guy's doing something in space i don't know i'm a ps3 but back on earth it's been blown to hell literally because now there's these annoying fire lava pits and these dobby ripoffs Harry Potter. Such an honor. That are the most annoying shits ever, but you only see them on this map because, spoiler alert, there's a goddamn robot bus now. And you get to go to all your favorite places like the diner with the mystery box and oh, the bus, the bus left you. Well now you just gotta sit there for 10 minutes as he slowly goes around the map, but then he takes you to a little shitty farm, a, a tiny little power plant, which I guess is kinda cool, in an okay town, but that's the last stop. So you better hope you had fun on the other parts of that amusement park ride, or you might as well just play that fucking map on its own. Which is what I did for most of my Black Ops 2 Zombies career. Because I was too young, too broke, too stupid to pay for all the DLCs, which include DLC 1, turn where you are the zombie in about four people played that mode ever in the next map die rise which jesus fuck you're zero for two on this game treyarch this game is turning out some of its worst maps to date and we're only just getting started this map isn't much to write home about it's a skyscraper where you most of the time just die to fall damage in this zombies mode where the zombies are not your biggest failure you are you dirty bitch it's got the cum gun which is cool um Okay, that's about it. What else does this shitty game have to offer? Where are we going from here? Where do we go? Well, I stand corrected. Not only did this game give us two of the worst maps in existence, they also somehow turned out the best maps we've seen to date with the next three maps of this. The first of which being the second of the dead series that we talked about before, where Michael Madsen, Joe, Joe, the pants guy, Shaz, Polly Minimeter, and Ray Liotta all attempt to escape the zombie infested Alcatraz Island, and this map fucks. I've only played this map like three times because I only got the DLC after I already had a PS4 so I never got to experience the true experience, but from what I did play, I thoroughly enjoyed this map and I can tell it's one of the best. But a map I do have a lot of experience on is DLC 3, which included another banger map in Barry. Barry, Barry in a western town. Barry, if you hear the sound of a crazy bitch you flying around. This map fucks. Hard. They got this big motherfucker named Jocasta, that's his legal name, and no one can argue with me. I have a machete in my closet, try to argue, I'll, I'll f***ing cut you. Buried, which is an underground western town that has some of the coolest atmosphere in any zombie's map, some of its coolest features like a time travel bomb and a gun that makes you fly. They also got the witches I was talking about earlier, that some, there's some crazy ghost ladies in there, because the guy who created the pack much machine originally did a fun little thing where he took his mother's corpse and put it in the machine and, and then pack a, and pack punched his dead mom. Isn't Zombies such a fun game mode? The main new addition to this map is this big ass motherfucker. Bad motherfucker waves his arms and gesticulates for several awkward moments. Would you mind if I ask you some personal questions just to get to know you? Motherfucker. Did you ever fall in love? Motherfucker. <laughs> Did she break your heart? Motherfucker. <laughs> Will you ever love again? Motherfucker. <laughs> he is an idiot in the best way, but if you give him some booze, that motherfucker is going to use it like a pigskin and run full speed into the nearest wall. He also gets really scared and hurt feelings when you shoot him with a gun. So this pussy goes and locks himself in prison and it's the most annoying thing ever. It's like babysitting a gigantic baby and oh, he's holding a crawler for me. Okay, I forgive you, you big lug. And then finally, after all that, we make it to what I would say is the greatest map ever created for zombies and still to this day believe that it changed the course of zombies forever. Origins.
Origins takes the zombies formula we've come to love over the years and fully flips it upside down and spanks that motherfucker sideways because this map is unlike anything we've ever seen before. The zombies we know and love consists of usually a decently small map with branching pathways to designate different ways to get to the power room or different perk machines along with the pack-a-punch. But Origins, while it still does have those branching pathways, does something unseen and has a full overarching storyline that you follow as if it's a separate game from the rest of the maps. You follow the original cast of characters through the eight steps of Arcuda in order to free the spirit of Samantha Maxis, the little girl who was in the pyramid. I don't know the reasons why we're in the trenches fighting zombies with staffs and big ass robots but we're here and they could they, they gotta do it because Fuck you. The cast of characters you play in these maps are one of the many reasons people fell in love with this game and the story surrounding it. And this is, I guess, the first time these characters are meeting each other, even though we've been playing as them since Keener or Toten, Time Travel, Hootenanny, whatever. These characters are iconic. They are just insanely baseline stereotypes at first, but they slowly get personality and transform into the beloved characters that we know today. There's Takio, who is a Japanese swordsman, Dempsey, an American soldier, Nikolai, a drunk Russian guy who can't stop drinking and talking about his wife's, and the main man out of the bunch, Edward Richthofen, voiced by the amazing Nolan North. I'm over here stroking my dick, I got lotion on my dick right now, I'm just stroking my shit. These characters are the main boys we follow throughout the stories, and in this map they're going on their wildest adventure yet. The steps go as such. STEP ONE! Secure the key! where you build and upgrade each of the wonder weapons on this map, the elemental staffs, and I think this is by far my favorite wonder weapon. Each one is so unique and viable that you can have an interesting experience with every one of them. STEP TWO! ASCEND FROM DARKNESS! You gotta place the staffs in these dudes. THREE! RAIN FIRE! Blow up the floor. FOUR! UNLEASH THE HORDE! Kill these guys. FIVE! SCURE THE WICKED BEASTS! Good this plane. Fist some zombies. Er, wait. Seven. Kill zombies. Step eight, Reznov. Step eight. Freedom. Press square. You beat the game, and then there's a cutscene that plays, and you get returned to the main menu. And usually, when this happens, it's because you failed. But this time, you actually get to see your characters finally escape the horde of undead zombies, and you feel accomplished, like you just beat a full new game, even though you can just load back in and die on round three again. But that's the beauty of this map. It's its own designated experience where if you don't know all that all that exists, the map tries to tell you but you won't have a bad time. You'll just be on a cool map with some cool staff with some hot ass. Zombies to blast. This map doesn't restrict you for not knowing which staff goes in which fucking robot and that you gotta throw this thing in the exact place for it to do shit. For all you know, it's just a cool zombies mode, but the underlying cheese below the surface is what adds its exciting feeling whenever I get the thought of playing it. The sense of progression when you finally complete the next step and figure out how to build each staff is such a great feeling, and weirdly, I think the thing I can compare it to the most is the outposts in Far Cry. Because yes, you could go guns blazing and take out everyone, but they'll have a number advantage so there's a chance you get overtaken and killed but there's also a much more sneaky stealthy approach where you could complete the entire outpost without alerting a single person which I think is dope but that same feeling doing those unorthodox things and fucking up only to somehow clutch it back up and win in the end is how getting step one feels a lot of the time because there's a very streamlined way you can do all of them but then sometimes a zombie gets in your way and fucks you over so you gotta improvise and unleash the bear from the cage or in zombies term throw a monkey bomb or something in order to fully maximize your efficiency in this map and get the new world record speedrun, which is a thing and it's insane to watch, you have to be thinking three steps ahead of what you're currently doing so that you don't get caught with a finger up your ass. I've had it happen to me, it's not a fun experience. I think this map is truly where zombies found its peak with the hardcore zombies community because after this it was banger after banger after banger after, well, Banger! After us zombies nerds were eating good for a while, but I can't overlook the fact that for the casual fan, motherfuckers are like Warzone and chugging Mountain Dew and shit, this mode was way too confusing for them to get into at the time, especially with the release of Black Ops 3, because the launch only came with two maps. Shadows of Evil, which is the same idea of Origins but with a far more confusing way that if you don't have a guide of some sort, it's going to be a slug. And a remastered map, The Giant, otherwise known as Darice. See, I got there in the end. I knew you didn't have to worry, you learned what it means. 
And if you were the bitch who looked it up earlier, fuck you. And while having the giant allowed players to play that original zombies feel that we got in World War, one, it was not even a free map. You either had to pre-order it or buy it on a shop after the fact. And two, if you already got confused and annoyed by shadows, you sure as hell weren't gonna try a different map that you're even less used to. Side note, I'd like to add that shadows did in fact result in this masterpiece, so but that does bring it up in the hierarchy of maps. I risk my case sustained overruled. So while this game was the best zombies ever gotten in its heyday, the casual fans hated it and saw it as a waste of a mode in their game. But this video isn't about those dorks. Ooh, I'm scared. The zombies hit me and I died. Skill issue. Get better. Fuck you. Go hide in a bush on Fortnite and, and kick a child in the face. That actually... Kicking a child does actually sound pretty funny. Black Ops 3 introduced Shadows, and as I told you, was the technical of the dead map we got with all these fun celebrities and shit, but where things get really batshit out of this crazy town is the release of DLC 1, Thur Eisendrak, otherwise known as the Iron Giant. Which by the way is the first time since Kino that we've had a map named something in a different language than English. Thur Eisendrak was ne <laughs> Which, as you can clearly tell, is the answer to a lot of people's concerns, basically being Origins Part 2, even starting out with one of those crashed big motherfucking robots. This map not only implemented a lot of its core design principles from Origins, it also got a lot from the older beloved maps of the past, like Mob of the Dead and how you get the Wonder Weapon, which is a bow and arrow that you can upgrade into different elementals such as Fire or Dog. Sound familiar, gamer boy? <laughs> it also brings a lot from Moon because, uh you get to fucking blow it up. It has elements that make it feel nostalgic and well known like you've been here before which is kind of the theme of all of zombies but it also adds a new element that blends the gameplay of both of the loved gameplay designs of zombies. You got A shoot shoot blame or kapow round based and option number B the story and I honestly was more in a camp of road A because at this time I'd never played Origins and was just looking for fun high rounds like I got on the giant and it gave me that and I really enjoyed going back years later and doing the story I loved that part too Treyarch you did it again you dirty bag of beans this map felt like the love letter to all the fans we so desperately needed because it felt so serious and story focused that we needed a map we could just blow up the moon right after we got suction cumped by a doinker well Disco Let's Play because if this is not a panic at the disco I don't know what is the groom's bride is a whore I chime in with the haven't you people ever heard of closing a door, door, door no. the mini easter eggs in this map gave players that didn't want to do crazy steps something fun to search for and achieve from apart from the progression of the rounds which made it much more replayable for a lot of people but on the other side of that road or as the British like to say the the other side of the road, they still like to call it the same thing, it's just ass backwards, like those weird little goobers. The main storyline has the same idea from Origins, where you do a lot of insanely convoluted, confusing things in order to get to the end goal, but this end goal has a huge fucking boss fight, Keeper Dude, which is unheard of in zombies, which is a great change of pace than just, okay, after you get the serpent penis, you can place it in the serpent penis shaped hole in the sarcophagus of this basement, and you throw this grenade directly at the E on this poster that says E. A sports it's in the game and you get a secret little other penis looking key that you put into the secret compartment on the quick revive box and you open it by saying the magic phrase and now you can go shoot exactly eight zombies and if you press square you can watch a cutscene where this little girl plays with dolls okay bye which isn't in this map you also get a boss fight after pressing square to end this game dummy DE is the cool kids like to call it also has an interesting thing where you can um, have infinite zombies on round one. Now they kind of forgot traps exist on this game, so they didn't really take it into consideration and this one just duplicates zombies making it possible to complete the main easter egg on round two, which is not a very normal thing to happen. But with that, it's not like it's game breaking. The developers for some reason seem to have this idea in mind that we need the game mode to be balanced and the zombies favor. Like the zombies aren't getting a fair chance at winning. Fucking duh, of course the zombies don't get a fair chance. We're the ones playing the game. If we want to be overpowered, fucking let us. I don't get the idea that the game shouldn't let you be good because then it ruins the experience because by no means does adding more game to your game make the game bad, you know? Like the zombies fan base is so dedicated that no matter what, you'll see someone go through a hundred rounds with a starting pistol. We just love to challenge ourselves but we also hate being limited by the game itself. Zombies is supposed to be a sandbox where we can do absolutely anything we want and Black Ops 3 was the complete wet dream for that. 
with the introduction of gobble gums. Gobble gums were gumballs a lot like perk machines, but this time you can customize what you get, ranging from classics like a button to just teleport to a random spot on the map or make your melee do more damage, to completely unhinged mega gobble gums by giving yourself every perk instantly or making everything free, or even, I don't know, temporary invincibility. Near Death Experience is legit, just makes it so you can't lose the game for the next three rounds, and I fucking love it. I don't know why the devs want to make everything so streamlined and balanced for your guns don't do as much damage to make it too easy like this game was never intended to be a real game and it was made out of the probe of just pure fun which is what it is for a lot of people just a fun relaxing game mode but this game mode got so much bigger and more recognizable it's like Treyarch wanted to make sure it seemed like the other game modes and they started patching the wonder weapon to make it not do as much damage which is the stupidest thing I've ever heard and it just makes maps like Firebase Z from a good map to a decent one because now the wonder weapons kind of just a slightly better alternative to the regular guns, which never was the point of all these weapons. You're supposed to have a sense of progression in each map, starting from nothing but a pistol and a wet dream, and slowly ascending from darkness into this unstoppable god-killing machine that can survive forever. That's what made these maps so fun, and why Black Ops 3 is still to this day regarded as one of the best zombies games ever. It allowed you to be overpowered, but it also allowed you to restrict yourself and give you a challenge by making it the perfect sandbox for players. Which is why in May of 2017, Treyarch did something that was unheard of until this very moment. They released Zombies Chronicles. Zombies Chronicles was where things went from fuck to very fuck. One fateful day in the Lear of Our Lord 2016, a man by the name of JC Backfire got a knock on his door and who else was at it but God King of the Zombies Universe, director Jason Blundell. And he slowly took his jacket off like a skimpy little maid and announced the fact that DLC 5 was actually a thing. Not only had there been new DLC, but this DLC would add 8 new remasters of the original maps including Noct, Verrucht, Shinonuma, Kino, Shang, Ascension, Moon, and Origins. And the zombies community went fucking wild. We finally got some of the greatest zombies maps of all time now dedicated to this one game and this game that so many had crowned the king of zombies games with the gobble gums and movement system being miles ahead of every other game. And we were finally able to relive those past moments on a absolutely beautiful, faceful remasters. And this was everything the fanbase had been clamoring for. We didn't get every map we wanted to, but this is the breath of fresh air that the zombies community needed to fully trust in the game again. They do listen to us, they do come through when it matters the most, and they do deliver on making some of the most enjoyable moments in zombies history. Everything from the trailer to the robot's feet picks hit hard. I remember watching the Chronicles trailer over and over again at lunch in high school because I was so fucking excited to be able to play these maps on the next gen and when it finally released, I played the ever loving shit out of them. I have more hours on Kino and Origins than I do have on any other Black Ops map apart from maybe the Giant. This game is the first COD game where I ever prestiged and not only did I prestige, I prestiged 9 times so far. To this day I still regularly come back to this game and these maps and to enjoy myself and play with my friends. And that's why I'd consider it to be the peak of zombies. So many old faces came back to play this game again because now instead of getting pushed away due to confusing map designs, they were drawn in with the nostalgia of the Thunder Gun and the Wonder Walk. It made everyone who played these maps in the past get a huge old dopamine rush because it feels like you're just re-experiencing those moments you had as a child. But if you never even played them before, it's just 8 new incredible maps that you get to try out now. It was a perfect way to conclude Black Ops 3 after the lackluster ending that Revelations left for us. It made us so much more excited for when they finally announced Black Ops 4. But before we talk about that, I have to mention some of the reasons that I still play this game as much as I do. Legends never die, we've been going every night, I've been feeling way Within too- Within every gaming community, there are always these core aspects that follow most, if not all, communities in this day and age of 2023, the year of Baldur's Gate and children just doing a bunch of illegal drugs in the boys' bathroom at high school. And the core aspect of gaming, not, not the copious amounts of meth Barbara's doing, are content creators. And this community has an insanely big presence in this day and age, well, more like five years ago, but some of them are still doing stuff. Mainly these two guys but hey we also got mr raffle and good jesus what the f what no nonsense guide is he following how the fuck did he get so damn big from the ripe age of about 10 years old i watched all these guys basically on a daily basis i saw top 10 lists i saw high round attempts easter eggs tier list reaction videos from lex in his chat hi chat i doubt you're watching this on stream lex but if you ever do somehow see this video um uh can i can i get some fucking 
fridges in the chat. Let me see some fridge in the chat. Sh in, in the chat, fridges. Speaking of Mr. T over there, this man is was and still is my favorite zombies YouTuber. Chat, you know like a McDonald's burger. And is the only person in the community I regularly come back to to check out what he's got going on. And usually it's just more around 100s, or in his case, around 71s. But I don't know why this man screaming about left-handed people brings me such a weird sense of comfort, but... Nothing but love in this chat. We love the left-handed homies. I love the left-handed homies. Oh, okay, so chat, what hand do you bust with? That's a very interesting- The nostalgia I have from this community is honestly like no other for me. And I assume that's how people feel about Minecraft YouTubers, you know, the ones that didn't end up touching kids. Which isn't the best track record, but you get the idea. Booting up a Mr. Raffle Waffles video feels like I'm going to go to Wood Zombies Class 101 and get taught exactly how to make this zombie do the gritty for a free ray gun. And I trust every word out of that man's mouth like it's a gospel in the good book of Jimbus. Watching JC backfire is more of a recent addition, but still a nostalgic feel, which goes outside of his zombies content since I've seen him go apeshit over every game's conference that has happened and cry over many different types of zombies. <laughs> is this like playable? This is actually playable. Good. They want you to like David. They're trying. Oh! <laughs> The other YouTubers like The Smith Plays and Two Pro View Games also bring nostalgia, but I didn't watch them nearly as much as I watched everyone else, so seeing everyone go monkey over bananas over the PPSH showing up for 4 seconds in the Garage trailer is something that just can't be replaced in my nostalgia receptors of my brain. More for old PPSH! Yeah! Seeing Adam die and die and die and die again. Adam! That's <laughs> See, how's the neighbor? back? How is he back? I didn't even notice. This man came back. That really made me feel a lot better about my own zombie skill. This whole tangent and chapter really isn't important to the overarching retrospective of zombies, but at the end of the day, it's my video and these YouTubers and moments really influenced my, a lot of my childhood and adulthood, and I had to have like a little love letter to the dumbass random guys on the internet that gave my childhood countless hours of entertainment, so even though I doubt more than 40 people will watch this video and the men I mentioned in this video are definitely not in those 40, if any of you are watching, take this as a message from all of your fans that still support you and have stuck through all of the times with you, the good, bad, and challenge shuffles of zombies, when I say, thank you for providing us with such great memories and joy throughout the years, and here's hoping for the next Black Ops to really step the game up and bring that community back to its peak that we all desperately want again. So now let's get on with the rest of the meat, potatoes, and spoiled broccoli that rolled under the fridge when we take a look at what Treyarch followed the Masterpiece of Chronicles up with. We now have to talk about Black Ops 4. Black Ops 4 is not a good game. I wouldn't go out of my way to see it's bad, and even after these years since the game initially released, it has grown on me a little, but the art and beauty that is 9 will never make up for the horrible atrocities this game brought to me, like Voyage of Despair. I'm not going to talk about every map in detail like I did with most of the others, because honestly this game is where it really nosedimed into a pile of shit, but I just have to mention that 9 is the shining diamond encrusted needle in this haystack of confusing hay strands. I still believe this map could have gone to Black Ops 3 and no one would have batted an eye. It's so enjoyable and it stands out so hard compared to every other map in Black Ops 4, so where did it all go wrong? Well for starters, they completely reworked the perk system, which was beloved ever since the first fucking game. They changed the starting way of play by introducing new classes that you can choose from the start. You can choose to start with a shotgun or SMG now instead of having to use the shitty pistol like always, which is nice. It's another way of being overpowered, which is what the fans have been asking for, right? Well, no. I mean, yes, we want to have the choice to be as overpowered as Dewey with that anthill. I spent days watching the ants, trying to figure out which ones were good and which ones were bad. But they all just looked like ants. So I started smiting all of them. Well, that's but we want to be the ones to earn it. We want to be able to work our way out from being in immediate danger of being slapped not once, not twice, not even once now, to being Godslayer 99 with your big laser gun to blast through every zombie like some 
big laser gun. I don't know any analogies. Why are you even watching this video so already? This is this video is so long. The ability to start with a gun that can already last you up to high rounds defeats the purpose of having a starting weapon and makes that sense of progression and learning curve dissipate because now there's no fear that you might just immediately get killed because you have no jug or good gun because now you start with both. One of Black Ops 4's biggest changes implemented is the new perk system and with that they decided they didn't like that most people stuck to the same few perks like jug, double tap, and speed cola so they decided to just fucking get rid of them. Mainly Juggernog, the most iconic perk in all of zombies, a fake brand soda that has sold more merch than Nikolai ever did and they just smited it into the ground. But how did they fix that missing feeling that we have? They just gave you Jug right off the bat. Now you just have four hit down from round one. Which gets rid of any fear or sense of danger. Because if you go down in the early games, it's deliberate. They're trying to give you everything you would ever need to get to high rounds and be god at the game. Which is cool, it's a nice sandbox, but it's never a good challenge for the player. There's nothing to strive towards. Yes, you could just turn up the difficulty in the main menu. But most people just stick to easy. Because if we go to a higher difficulty, we can't have Jug at all. The way they went about fixing the perks was completely wrong and just ruined the gameplay loop the older games have because they wanted to reinvent it so you would have be made to use different perks instead of the core four that everyone gets so they added a fuck ton of new perks which is cool but they also kept the four perk limit like shit if you don't want us to stick to the best four perks in the game don't limit us to four perks a game and this way actually made it more limiting than the previous games because at least in the older games if you downed and lost all your perks you could be like okay i'll just go get something else and try a new different strategy now if you don't like the perks you choose you can't change the perks in the perk slots in the in game you have to go all the way back to the main menu and select new perks and if you find the perks that work or just you look up what the best perks are and you will never stray from those four i haven't changed the perks i have equipped since the first month of the game came out because i have no want or reason to the limit Limitations are not fun, they're infuriating, and cause the friends to get bored of the game, because if you don't want to use the meta perks or the meta specialist or meta weapons, you're just making the game harder for yourself for the sake of making it harder instead of having multiple paths to achieve the goal that you want to get to. It's like good old naked Jimbo analogy of the dirty old bucket of Legos compared to a Lego set. Yes, everything in Zombies is like three Lego buckets in one, but in those buckets, most of the pieces are just replaced with the pamphlets that tell you exactly how to build those things. So you're kind of just sitting there like, okay, a, a Millennium Falcon is cool, but can I just put these blocks together and make a penis? Jesus Christ! The limitations aren't seen from the get-go, but they are lurking in the shadows like the Shadow Man will zombies joke for you. I briefly glanced over this huge thing in the last section because in this game of cat and mouse because the players are just trying to play the game the way God and Treyarch intended 10 years ago. Now Treyarch's trying to shove around 100 down your mouth by giving you the best wonder weapon on every map to you immediately with the specialist weapons. In that class section, you also get to choose from 8 specialist weapons. 4 for the OG boys and 4 for the new chaos group. And if you tap both R1 and L1 or fucking... Q and B on PC, I don't know, the button combinations. You think I'm gonna buy Black Ops 4 on two console systems? Are you stupid? Red Eye flashes twice! You have this big old dude with a timer on it that has infinite uses and throughout the game you can just use it forever. So if you wanted, you could get to around 100 without buying a single door or gun. It would just take a long time. If you can just tap your win buttons and get the best weapon ever, what's the point? What's the point of going through all those convoluted steps and easter eggs to get the wonder weapon if I can just not do that and get the same outcome with different weapon that sometimes is better than the wonder weapon anyways? There really is no incentive to proceed into the maps and that's why I believe I never really touched Dead of the Night in Ancient Evil because after the first maps I was like, okay, this is basically the same thing in different settings and I already liked 9 and Blood of the Dead a bit so why would I stray from those things and just go completely learn a new map and setup guide eventually just to have the same strategy you have on every other map with that little nice get out of jail free card you always have. Black Ops 4 is by no means a bad game. I wouldn't have put as many hours into it as I did if it's as terrible as I'm making it sound. But it is a bad zombies game. Out of all the zombies experiences Treyarch has provided through the years, and no, I'm not even going to attempt to talk about you, this was by far the worst of the bunch. With lackluster maps and mediocre gameplay structures, it was the beginning of the downfall. And as the original zombie storyline came to a close in Alpha Omega, we had assumed that Cold War may just be that reinvention of the wheel that was necessary after Black Ops 4. And that's kind of what we got. But before that, I think we should add a little pep in our step after all that negativity, so... Dead Ops Arcade. It's a game about zombies, and I played it. And it's it's good. I, I liked it in most of the games, and it's it's in the game, and it's a uh, zombie. 
in November of the great year, we got our fifth and most recent installment to the Black Ops series, Cold War. And this is what a lot of people needed after the year that we had in 2020, and because of the influx of players Call of Duty receiving, due to everyone having nothing better to do than get on Warzone and play till their fingers bleed, they had high expectations to make zombies as fresh, exciting, and most importantly, noob friendly as possible. So they completely reworked the entire game mode once again, they brought back the perks, they reworked Nocturne and Toten into this new bunker map, they changed how the upgrade and leveling system worked, and they made it more realistic and down to earth and based in horror like the old games. And that's honestly what the fans have been hoping for after that last mess. No, it wasn't Black Ops 3, I don't think anything will ever top that system with everything it involved, but this was such a nice breath of fresh air that we'd been starving for for years, and being able to explore this new map with wonder weapons being viable again, especially with the ray gun finally having lived up to its name and was God's gift to zombies, and allowed people that had never even dreamt to getting to round 100 the ability to destroy zombies and feel unstoppable again without it just being handed to you. Getting the ray gun in this game is such a herculean task, which made the moment that you did get it and start obliterating zombies feel so satisfying just like it felt back in Kino. This game reinvented the wheel hard and gave it the fucking nos to just blast through these maps. It was amazing and with the new quest style easter eggs, they had the steps just almost being delivered told to you, it let newer players in on these easter egg secrets and made them feel included. And yeah, it was kinda odd being told what and where to go to because for so long it's been a player driven experience. It wasn't overbearing or forced, it was just guiding you along like a light version of Milo. And this process continued throughout the game's DLCs. Every DLC map from Firebase Z to Forsaken were all relatively good maps and gave players a new fun sandbox in each and with the player base sticking around, the Zombies developers finally struck that nerve in fans that they have been desperately clinging to ever since Jason Blundell left the team. And in hopes to revitalize Zombies to a whole new level of hype and introduce new players into the game mode, they released a map that so far has changed the outlook and future of Zombies forever. But first, before that whole can of worms, I want to tangent once again to something I think is a huge personality piece for zombies as a whole and something I'd be mad at myself if I didn't mention, the soundtrack. This game's soundtrack is up there with the likes of Mozart, Beethoven, Kanye. This game mode literally does not miss. They can make a creepy piano track persist through seven games and still be a banger every single time, giving you those little shivers and frights you get because you know there might actually be a zombie under your bed right now. Go look. But they can also make a straight up metal screamo hit to absolutely destroy your ear holes and make you feel like the fucking Zorlac the destroyers smashing through everyone in your path, headbanging as you go. And every single map and secret music track does wonders. Kevin Sherwood is a god among men and he should be on the fucking Mount Rushmore. Get out of here George W.H.R. Bush. It's time for the real president of America to shine through. Even the perks themselves have their own jingle that sticks in your head like you would have heard it on your Saturday morning cartoons growing up. Every bit of personality that was put into this game was so deliberate and delicately placed and to grant this game the atmosphere that allowed it to grow into the iconic game it is. I could go on and on about each track individually, but this video is already way too long for that, so if you're inclined, here are some of my favorites that you should go check out if you haven't already. There's others, but just fucking look up the soundtrack or play the game or whatever. I don't know, I'm not your dad, I'm your drunk babysitter that accidentally took his job too seriously and now little Timmy is waist deep in the couch. The final chapter going over the zombies community hasn't actually happened yet. As of recording and uploading this video, Modern Warfare 3 has yet to drop but it's close, and Treyarch is helping develop their next zombies mode. And that mode is a complete sequel to the final map in Cold War, Outbreak. In 2020, everyone was forced to stay inside and just do nothing all day, so when Fortnite started catching wind, whenever that did, it just kind of took over the world, and every game company noticed and started immediately making every type of dog shit battle royale game they could. If you can think of it, there's a battle royale of it. It's like Rule 34, but like for kids. Oh, that's the worst thing I've said. Scratch that. That's it's like it's like football. 
but for vi video games. In 2020, there were so many Battle Royale games that it was basically impossible not to see if you played any type of video game. And one of the most popular ones was Warzone, which was Call of Duty's attempt at it, and it blew up hard. Everyone and their grandma was playing this game, and after Cold War Zombies had some success, the developers decided to take their try and release a new Zombies map that took place on the Warzone map, which if you didn't know, Warzone's map is like 15 times bigger than any Zombies map that we've seen to date, and you'd think a map of this size would be the worst thing ever for a mode about trying to evade massive hordes of zombies since the close quarter corridors were one of its biggest design aspects. And for many, you'd be right in thinking that. But not for Warzone players. This mode absolutely blew up in the COD community with a huge influx of players coming to try this one map alone because gone with a round based small maps where you had to have some sort of skill to maneuver and control the zombies, now you could just ride an ATV into six zombies at once and exfil out. This mode got more players than any other zombies mode had gotten, especially in cold war so when the developers noticed this huge shift in players they once again thought they hit a gold mine and while that was true at the time the people who didn't really enjoy this mode just watched from the background not paying much attention to it really didn't like this map it was so open and not very round based so the fans of the series up until this point just completely lost interest after the first playthrough and never paid another cent of attention to the game mode but they kept updating and updating and adding new content and patches to it to that game mode alone. And the other maps just got left in the dust like the middle child and the hardcore vans that kept the zombies ship from sinking for all those years got more and more neglected until they finally had moved on to their next toy, Vanguard. And they decided to do it again, and people fucking hated it again. I didn't pay much attention to anything Vanguard or play it, so I don't know really what happened. The game came out, it was bad, they bullied the team into making a round base map, which was one of the worst ones out there, and now we're on to present day finally. Modern Warfare 3 comes out in November, and they've already released trailers confirming that there is no round based zombies map in it. They're sticking to the Outbreak style with Treyarch elements like perks and pack punch, and so far it looks bad. It looks like an Outbreak copy paste in the Modern Warfare universe, and while yes, the casual audience might love that mode and praise it, there are a lot of zombie fans that will just not be playing or paying attention to anything that's happening with this game because all, for all they know, it's just another generic cash grab game mode to pull in the people who know what zombies are, even though the game mode itself will be targeted mainly at people who know what little to nothing about the core game of zombies. And that doesn't paint a good picture for the future of the mode, especially next year, when Black Ops 3 is supposed to be dropping. And there is a lot of pressure being put onto that game. So many people in this community, including people like Mr. T. Lexify, has outright said if the game is not what they want, if the game is anything like Vanguard or Modern Warfare is shaping up to be, they will leave the community for good and no longer support the game. And that, frankly, is all due to Treyarch's determination to find a new casual audience behind this mode, which is pushing all the old veteran fans that have supported this game for upwards of 16 years now away. And in doing so, it disrespects every one of those fans and proves to them that the love and passion that used to be in this mode, this mode that was made out of a simple hidden minigame that caught wind and blossomed into this huge, amazing game series instead of another game, that love is gone. It died out with Chronicles and has been hanging on with strand by strand for years now grasping at everything it possibly could to pull it back into the mainstream and they kept hitting that new high and immediately crashing and by no means does this mean that the next year's Call of Duty will be the last zombies game or even that that mode will be bad. I'm hoping more than anything that this game blows us out of the water and soars over our expectations and creates the masterpiece that we all want so desperately. But the faith I hold in Treyarch has dwindled away bit by bit, and I just don't know if it'll even hit that bare minimum we're hoping for. Either way, the game will live on. With this community or not, they're finding new life in the Warzone community, and if they aren't bored with it after Modern Warfare, they will continue to push towards that player base for years to come, and us OG fans of the game will be left in the dust to rot and die out with the mode that we once loved so dearly. At the end of the day, we really don't know what the future holds for us in this weird little community we found and cherished together, so maybe I'll update this video with a little sequel of my own one day going over how I feel about the next installment of Black Ops, but for now, after however long this weird little video is, if you stuck around for the entirety of it, fan of the game, fan of me, or neither, I appreciate it, and I appreciate you very much. This video has taken a lot to finally unpack and fit everything in that I wanted to say, but now that it's finally done, I can look back and be happy and proud that I made this. So I really hope all of you enjoyed it, and I hope you consider subscribing if you enjoyed. 
me and my co-host of this channel create these types of videos on all sorts of different topics, so if you enjoyed this one, I guarantee you'll enjoy some of our other videos. This channel has completely blown up in the past week or so, and we cannot begin to thank you enough. We've already issued like six thank yous, but from the bottom of both of our hearts, thank you. The support means so much to us, and it's just going to continue to motivate us to keep doing videos like these. I'm already working on a Spider-Man 2 video, so any of you that's hoping for that, just stay tuned. It'll hopefully be out before the end of the year, and hopefully it'll be just everything you guys are hoping for. But with that, I won't keep you here for any longer. Go check out all the people I mentioned in the video. They're all amazing creators and deserve more love than they already get. Uh, like this video if you liked it, and if you didn't, like it anyway, you bitch. Go follow our new Twitter, because we probably have a Twitter if we're going to be uploading these types of dude ads every so often. Uh, we also got a TikTok that you're legally obligated to go follow if you've made it this far into the video. Um, subscribe if you want more videos of the floor. I don't know. Get out of here already. <laughs> Would you like it if we got a dog to come along with us? Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I've been wishing for some better days could you listen no way can you stay i write love your songs for a time